All right, so we are currently developing or still working on an autonomous lab robot in a normal lab environment, all using SILA to automate and for device communication. So this is still, so I'll walk you a bit through the basic concept of it and then we jump right into the live demo and explain the different components of it and how they work together on a more technical level. If we have time, we might have a look at remaining challenges, oops, remaining challenges and next steps. So this all, the goal of this project is really to learn and understand, to learn about challenges and uh, overcome them. So it's continuous work in progress, which is also the fun fun part of it. So let me jump right to acknowledgements in the first place because I might not have time later on. Uh, give me a second. Uh, thanks first, Oliver, for enabling this at Idorsia. Also, R Ricardo from Unite Labs, who was heavily involved. Timothy took over there a bit. And uh, Rob Harkness at the beginning, at this time still at Aztec Projects. Now that's more of Toby and Matt who took over. Furthermore, Michael developed some components of it. I'll show you that later on in the live demo. So the basic concept is a free range robot in a normal lab environment. So this is devices that are used by other people, but at night or at the weekend, the robot can serve them and operate them. As said, it's all automated using SILA too. Uh, the basic uh, task we want to automate here, we use as a demo, is a cell culture pilot. So this is a very small thing. The idea is you put your cells in a six well plate into an incubator, and the system will, from then on, just take care of them, feed them, or even split them in the case of adherent cell culture. So we have generally at the moment one well in a six well plate growing cells, and we use one other six well plate stored in a fridge with the media, the trypsin, PBS, to perform these splitting operations. So basic workflow is like this. The robot scans the incubator for cell plates, takes them out one after the other. It measures confluence on the microscope. And then if it's above a certain threshold, it either puts them back in the incubator or if they're, let's say, above 70% confluent, it will perform a splitting operation or media feeding operation on a liquid handler placed in a standard laminar flow. So, and that already brings us to the live demo. So you've seen similar presented last year, last autumn, as a movie. We keep, kept working on it, made it a bit more stable, improved a few things, had a few more devices in the zoo. So we thought we dare doing a live demo. So this is all hosted on a PC here. You can access it from everywhere within the corporate network. You have a workspace showing some basic functionality of here the fridge. You can just open and close the door. You have other devices as the robot being a bit more complex, featuring more commands. So you describe a workflow as we've seen in another presentation today in a BPMN fashion. So wonder why our items look the same like the ones at Roche. But this is the workflow we'll be demoing today. So you have sub-workflows. We pick out the plate from fridge and incubator, measure confluency, then move them to the pipetter and perform a basic liquid tra transfer and put them back. We see how far we get. So let's just start this and see what happens. So, we actually should be seeing. 
think it didn't click wrong. Let's try once more. This is a bit easier. Alrighty. Ah, uh, that's not very good. Let's give me a second. Of course, there's a demo effect. We'll just try to reboot all the servers and see if that solves our problem. We did a bunch of these demos until now, and so far, the most of them worked more or less. So let's see. We get it to run. If not, we have a we have a movie about it. So let's just wait for Unite Flow being back online. All the components which you see in green here, one component not yet, but this one generally takes a bit longer, and it should be here soonish. So, okay, here we go. Okay, let's jump right to our workflow, try to run it again. Nope, not today. Okay, so I'm sorry, I need to, need to go for the movie. Would have been too nice. Okay, so as you've seen before, it has the advantage we can advance a bit faster. So we have, as said, this functionality directly accessing and controlling all the devices. And furthermore, we can just run the workflow as said before. So you can run it in a scheduled fashion, like every day or every few hours, things like that. And most of the components the system is consisted of, you can access via a web browser. So what you see here is the basis of the robot, which is like a mobile robot used in a warehouse. And you see the map that's recorded using the lasers, laser sensors. In black, you see what we recorded some time ago, and in, black, uh, in red, the current one. So you see the basis at the bottom here, and on top of it, we have a universal robot's arm, and we have this stereo camera on top of it. So here we have the fridge, so your standard beverage fridge equipped with a, like you see here from iGripper, with a standard door, or door opener, controlled with a raspberry, and equipped with a shelving system here to store your media plates. So we use, just saw that kind of QR code like tag you see here again from the view of the stereo camera. We use that to triangulate between the position that was once taught of this tag, the location of the plate, because the mobile base is not very accurate. It's like plus or minus five centimeters accuracy, but of course you want more towards the millimeter range if you move these plates around. So we take the first plate, and then from the incubator, we perform the same operation again. So under the control section of the controlling software, the scheduling software, of course, you always see at which task the robot is at the moment. So yeah, the, we equipped the entire room with a bunch of network cameras to also run it repeatedly at night to just challenge it for reliability. And generally works better than today, but. <laughs> so here we also started with our prototype 3D printed shelves in the incubator, but it turned out that these PLA extruded shelving systems weren't so uh, good at 37 degrees, so it started to get soft all the time. So we upgraded that for like a sheet metal version you see here. I think I did zoom in to the movie later on. And here as well, we have the reference that the camera uses to triangulate the position of the plates. So robot is grabbing a plate 
and then bringing it further to one of the newer devices we have. Uh, so doing cell culture without a microscope isn't very realistic. You want to see how your cells did grow or not. So we tested a bunch of different, more a uh, bunch of simpler or not so simple microscopes. Turned out we already had one in-house and the supplier came out with a working CELA driver within a week or two. So, so we decided to go for this one in the first place. So it's always the same story. You see the robot scans for the tag, places the plate. We do a simple cell confluence determination on the microscope. And if you use that as a decision to go for the splitting operation or not. I see we're quite late, so let's jump a bit ahead in the whole process. So we take him back, we go to the incub uh, to the hood, which in which we place a simple simpler liquid handling device. It's the Andrew. It's the yours like entry level non-scary liquid handler. And we had a bunch of troubles with it in the beginning. Actually, it doesn't really feature too much of an API. So we were able to execute a few, like the last executed protocols. But as soon as we had like the incubation steps and stuff inside, it wouldn't work anymore. So we decided to go for a different solution there, which is another recent development we did. So the Andrew features a cloud-based scheduling software that also launches the experiment. The device more or less is not very clever. It just tells what the cloud client tells it to. So what we actually implemented is we use that cloud that cloud client with an RPA tool, with a robot process automation tool. That's a Selenium in case you heard of them. So that's your standard robotic, uh, your bots crawling the web for information, clicking or entering information. So we just tell it to retrieve protocols and then tell it to click on here, test three, execute that uh, protocol and it goes for a few more clicks a user would need to do and launches the experiment the pipetting on this uh, pipetter so you see there's a bunch of these checks a user would need to perform but this is all automated by the selenium sila client so which then just launches a simple liquid transfer here Andrew grabs the pipette, scans it, removes a bit of medium here for simplicity. We just remove a bit of medium. And then the next step, the robot actually will relit the plates, which is quite a nice feature you can do with a six axis robot we're using here. You see it grabs the lid. Uh, the first scans for the tags again. Then takes the lid and does this roll and tilt movement of the lid like a human would do on a plate. And I think it's already 45, so I might stop here. <laughs>